talk now about um, members of each of our present centers that are represented here. And first our talk is going to be given by the abbot of Anthony Gates Zen Center, Ezra Clark. Unusual treat today. We have, a member, uh, we have several members of our Polar Society here, and uh, Anthony Suska will give you a fun speech on their behalf. Well, I can certainly echo Ezra's feelings. I was just telling somebody that I was amazed by the silence here. There's one thing that strikes me coming from New York to Providence every time. So uh, when Andre came from Poland to um, New York last week, he uh, came loaded down with this um, package full of some really amazing um, documents and translations. And one of them, probably all of you have seen it by now, but one of them was this big official government approved, stamped, and sealed, and signed by the Secretary of Religion from Poland, that the uh, Choke Zen was now an officially approved religion under, in Poland. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also he had with him the translations of Drop Nash's on the Buddha into Polish, and also into Czechoslovakian, where it's, um, it would be illegal to have the book in Czechoslovakia. And, and also, um, that was extremely impressive to me because I was just amazed that uh, in just those few short years they've been able to uh, be officially recognized. But then he started talking, we started talking about the um, Polish Sangha. He was telling me when Solidarity was having, Solidarity was having their strikes, the Polish Sangha was doing their own judgment. 
And when they had food shortages, the Polish language was doing it in <laughs> And when there was any problem, when the, uh, all that news about the Russians were poised at Poland's border, they held them in jail. <laughs> and that kind of mind just uh, impressed me very much, and it helped explain why I've been able to do so much in such a short time. And in New York, we get many, many visitors to the Chobie International Zen Center. And I'm beginning to see um, how rare Sunstein's teaching is. I know Sunstein, you always say you're nothing special. But anyway, uh, <laughs> this don't make anything. And over, over and over again, Sunstein says, don't make anything. It's, um, it's a very, very teaching. And putting it all down is also a very, very teaching. And I'm just beginning to see that from all the visitors who come to our center. And this mind that doesn't make anything and only goes straight um, can do what's been done in Poland. And I can't think of a better birthday present for Sansanin than what um, Andre and Anthony brought from Poland. And so I personally. Thank you, Louise. On behalf of the New Haven Center, I'm saying I'd like to wish you a happy birthday. When Samsonim was born, there were two things which occurred which would have signified that in the future he would be a Zen master. One of them was he was born with a bald head. <laughs> see it. 
So we use it uh, as part of the teaching tool. So, so all the Zen centers across the nation are linked up together by this device. So it's so even in the gifts that that, were, that are given to Sun Sanin, he keeps giving back to us and teaching us with it. And for that, we're all very grateful, Sun Sanin. Thank you. <laughs> For the Shingon Dose and Sword Center in Boston, Eric Feller. One morning I woke up and I looked out the window and it was very, very dark. It was darker than it usually is. And, uh, it was also raining. And uh, the rain was, it was very heavy rain and it was coming down straight. And my first impression was that this is a rain that's going to last all day. You know? and, uh, there was no question in my mind. I just accepted that right away. So I got up and went to uh, you know, put out the cushion and uh, ring the bell, wake everybody up. And you know, everybody got up and did bows and sitting and chanting. And then uh, after all that, uh, went out to the kitchen to have you know breakfast. Some people left because they had to go to work. And stuff like that. So the first thing I did was uh, go to the kitchen door, open it up, and, and go outside. And it was uh, just beautiful out. You know, there was there wasn't a cloud in the sky. It was just really nice. But it was a little different than it usually is in the summer. It was it wasn't a hot day like this. It wasn't like this morning was. It wasn't slow and heavy. It was very cool out, and it was it seemed much more like uh, a day at the end of winter and beginning of spring. It was kind of a little bit cold, and uh, there was a breeze blowing, and uh, it was like, you know, you know those days that you have spring fever? It, it seemed very much like that. And so after everybody uh, went to work, I went around and uh, opened uh, all the windows and all the doors and just let this spring breeze come in and fill up the house. And, uh, and as, instead of going to work, I just sort of uh, turned around for a while. And then, uh, and it just, you know, you know how they, they talk about Zen masters as being, uh, you know, some, sometimes they're called drag, and sometimes they're called tiger. You know, when I first, my first introduction to Zen was uh, that these guys are uh, very heavy people, you know, dealers, they be intimidated by. And uh, to me, something isn't that way at all. To me, it's, it's very much like a, uh, a spring breeze. It's very light, uh, very uh, easy, and it makes uh, Zen easy. It makes Wanted me wanting to see myself as this practice and to uh, Shingon Do and to helping other people, uh, a very easy thing. So I'm grateful for that. Um, so for uh, myself and for everybody who cares about Shingon Do and Hanjin, They say in Buddhism that there are four great sufferings in our lifetime. For 
a chance for us to become clear in our lifetimes. As I said before, every year Sassanim says, it's my birthday, but not my birthday. So I think if we don't celebrate Sassanim's birthday, then we can celebrate the fact that, you know, that we're lucky to have such a teacher, and we're lucky to have all come together to be able to practice. big circle. Which one do you want? This is, I think this is my fourth birthday formal Dharma speech. 
speech. And I gave a birthday form of Obama speech when his son's name was 51, and, and his body was 52, and his body was 53, and now his body is 54. And this is a red letter day for son's name, 50 to 4 year old body. And one thing I've heard people say about son's name is that whenever you see a picture of me, I always look the same. And that's, I think that's been true up until now. And, uh, but now, when you <laughs> see a picture of this 54 year old body, you'll notice something very different. And uh, that is, he has this part of his body that he, when he first came to um, the United States, was very big. <laughs> and he used to call it uh, his star market. <laughs> he couldn't say stomach, so he said star market. And now, it disappeared. He has no star market. <laughs> and those of us who have been around him the past couple of weeks know why. And he's on this very special diet. And I think it's he might even make a book and make lots of money with this diet. All he does is eat cucumbers and kochi chong. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's amazing that someone who's 54 years old could change their karma so much in just two weeks. He used to take 60 units of insulin to, you know, to keep his blood sugar down, and then he always felt that he had to eat a lot to get a lot of energy, and we all know he has a lot of energy. So he had this cycle that he this habit of, of uh, getting energy from his, you know, calories and then having to control his calories with his insulin and going around and around like this. And then it worked. It was, was a very wonderful teacher. But, you know, after all these years, he decided to try this different technique. And so he's just eating cucumbers and kochi chong and not taking any insulin. And it's a very uh, rare thing to see a diabetic go from 60 units to zero in two weeks. And... Uh, I'm impressed. <laughs> and, uh, this morning I was sitting next to him. We sat for an hour this morning. And it, just the two of us were in the row. And I, was, I felt it felt very nice sitting next to him on his birthday and sitting with him. And I was kind of thinking, boy, he's still in his bed and he hasn't had breakfast yet. And didn't, he's not eating dinner. He doesn't even have a cucumber at dinner. And, he had all this energy, and I kind of check, and it's like he's doing his mantras, click, click. He has this really long mantra, where he's just clicking it away, and, and uh, like he always does. And, and I was going through my usual routine of sometimes being very strong and clear, and other times going like this, and then, then being awake again. And uh, even with all of his inspiration right next to me, I was, you know, really pushing to, to be awake. And so. It's no problem for me to uh, talk about him on his birthday, even though it's my fourth time. Uh, this week, a few days ago, I was at Cape Cod with, with Link and Annie and some very good friends, and, and it was this wonderful place that I was at, and it was this wonderful situation where with people that I really like and uh, doing things that I really like to do. Like, like I guess my three favorite things are, physical things are like swimming and riding bikes and sailing and I got to do all three of those things and play with Annie and, and then uh, one night we had uh, a and dogs ice cream with Pepperidge Farm uh, apple turnovers <laughs> all these uh, things that are, make our bodies very happy you know? and so like 90% of me was having a wonderful time really a wonderful time and then there's this 10% that was you know, part of it you could call checking, and part of it was just uh, perceiving that, that I was thinking about Sansanim and thinking how uh, he, he doesn't do this. You know, he doesn't take these vacations. And it's not bad to take a vacation. I'm not saying that. But um, there was this 10% of me that, that, that saw that, that, that my teacher Sansanim never does that. You know, never goes off, even if it's only a day and a half, you know, and just indulges himself. And... So I was riding home from this vacation, and again, 90% completely accepting that it was good for, to do that, and, and, and really enjoyed it, and then this 10% checking, and, then, and uh, uh, thinking about Sansanim. And so there's this bridge that, that goes over, I guess there's a canal that 
boats can go through and you know, cut through the cape, and there's this big bridge that, that joins the cape and the mainland. And I was, uh, we were about to go over this bridge, and I saw this great big sign, and it said, Desperate? With a big question mark. <laughs> and I thought, what? You know, what is this? And it said, uh, you know, please call like 332 or something. And it was signed Good Samaritan. And I thought, gee, that's a strange sign to put right at the beginning of the bridge. <laughs> and then we continued, you know, over the bridge, and I was looking up, and there's this big fence on either side of the bridge with these um, bars that go up. They're only like this far apart, very close together. And, and the bridge goes up, I don't know, 20 feet or so. The, the fence goes up about 20 feet, and then it curves in like that. And I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I, right away I figured it was an anti-suicide thing, so I mean, what else could it be for? Uh, it was to keep people from jumping over. And I, I asked Link, I said, the famous suicide bridge or something, and he said that he had heard that a lot of people jumped off of it. It's called, ironically, it's called the Bourne Bridge. <laughs> it's not spelled B-O-R-N, but it's called mm -hmm. the Bourne Bridge. And so, um, a lot of suffering in this world, a tremendous amount, and to the point where they'll spend hundreds of thousands of dollars just to build a fence on one bridge. And so if we cling to our desires, to our ignorance, to our anger, and we feed it a lot, a lot of the hot hog and ice cream and things like that, <laughs> then we have a problem. And, and we all know that that's why we're all here. And so our job is not to uh, cold turkey off of our uh, things that we enjoy doing, but our job is to moment to moment perceive what is most important to do. And really, not even being able to do that most of the time, but at least trying to do that, trying to see what is most important. And it's hard to do, and it's to the point where Sansanin, who I think has practiced an incredible amount in his life, and has given, given to people, and try to, uh, you know, as this morning I was sitting next to him, you know, a witness that he, he cuts, you know, he really practices just like we do, sitting, you know, sitting and chanting and bowing and, and uh, doing all those things. And, and our job is to, to accept that job, to, to moment to moment see what we need to do. And, and like 54 years old, it's, it's hard to all of a sudden think, gosh, I, you know, Maybe I've been eating wrong all these years. Maybe I don't need to eat this much. To actually look at yourself that, that way and to change your habits is a very, very difficult thing to do. And uh, I really admire that. Um, so it's, it's, uh, for, for me, and I think for a lot of us, it's our, we tend to look at our practice in a way of being opposites, as I did with the circle. You know, you old, you know, birth, old age, sickness and death, and then there's this other side where we have infinite time and space, no hindrance, and then we'll grow and be compassionate and wise. And I think what we need to do is to practice very hard and see that these things aren't two things. And there's a story I wanted to tell that kind of brings us together. Uh, I just heard it about a week ago. It's, it's called uh, Chung Nol. Chung Nol's body and soul are separate. And it's, this is a koan in the um, <coughs> Kong, and which I never really understood before. It's not something was uh, explaining it to me the other day, and to me and George. And Chung Nol was this very beautiful young lady who was in love with this um, army general. And her father was a very uh, high class governor in, in an empire or something. And, and so, uh, apparently at that time it wasn't culturally acceptable for Chung Ho to be in love with this uh, military man. It was too low class, I guess. So, so her her father um, told her that um, well, what he did was he took this army general and gave him orders to go to the country, to go far away in the country, and gave him orders like for three years to go away. And so um, the uh, the daughter was very very upset because she was really in love with this man and. And so she didn't know what to do. She really wanted to be with him. And, and the general was a very kind general and very famous, and, and everybody loved him. 
and he didn't understand why he was given these orders to, you know, kind of do this thing in the country where it wasn't such, it wasn't really good orders, you know, it wasn't an important job that he was being sent to do. And he couldn't understand that, but he just followed his orders. And, and so he kind of thought that it might have something to do with, you know, the daughter. And so he went to get on the barge to go down the river to go out to the country. And uh, just as the barge started to leave the dock, the daughter came running after him and said, I, I want to be with you. I want to go with you. And, and so Kia likes the story. <laughs> and so she, she uh, jumped on the barge and fell into his arms. And he said, he said, is this OK for you to be doing this? Isn't your father going to get angry? She said, no, don't worry. It's OK. And so he thought, well, that must not be the reason why I was given these orders. So they went off, and they had this wonderful three years together in the country. And so after three years, the daughter said, you know, it's, it's, time, it's time to return to the city now. We can go back. And, and so they gathered their things and got back on the barge and went back to the city. And when they uh, landed, the, everybody was really, really uh, surprised that he thought they were all going to be really happy to see him in general. And what they, they were happy to see him, but the big thing was that the daughter was there, and they just couldn't believe it. Because he chugged all this at you, and they pinching her and holding her. And, and uh, she went back to the palace where her father lived, and, and uh, her mother and father couldn't believe it when they saw her. And they led her to her bedroom, and here on her bed was Chung No lying there, just uh, vegetating, basically. Just lying. For three years, she had just vegetated and horribly depressed and, and unhappy that she had lost her lover. And so Chung No's soul and her body were separate. So the question is, <laughs> which one was the true Chung No? <laughs> Does anybody know? <laughs> Um, so, our situation is that we're either screwed up and, and depressed because we're not getting what we want, or else we're off having a wonderful time lots of times. So, Chung Na was very lucky that she did both things at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, I guess the most important thing I think I have to say today is that that. We're not Chung Ngo, and we're not uh, going to jump over a bridge, I hope. Those two things that are very opposite, you know, just being totally attached to ourselves, I can't take it anymore. And that's big ego that kills itself. Yeah. And we're kind of in between that, where we, we go back and forth. And sometimes we feel good and strong and clear, and other times we feel screwed up. But, but we have this wonderful gift of this teacher who just plugs away and doesn't check and, you know, sometimes goes into the cucumber diets or whatever and, and makes these changes once in a while. But not, in a, it's like he's not holding anything. That's why he can do that. He's not, doesn't have this I am, you know, doesn't have this idea of himself as a special Zen master or whatever. He's just a very special Zen master, so he doesn't have to worry. You know, just moment to moment, he does what he has to do. So I hope that all of us don't check ourselves, take a vacation when we need to take a vacation and, and realize that there's someone that we know that never takes a vacation and maybe that's the biggest vacation of all. Birth, old age, suffering and death, compassion and wisdom, infinite time, infinite space. Which one do you want? Happy birthday, Mr. Cucumber. <laughs> <laughs>
in quietness there is movement. Movement is quietness. From infinity go to infinity. What is this? There is one light without any name or form. Um, <coughs> that's the area I can understand. It's a people quoting uh, no beginning, no end. No beginning, no end. Christians said God made everything. But this world, no beginning, no end. Your life, everything, no beginning, no end. Everything is no beginning, no end. If you attach name and form, begin and end. We, you have that. If you no attach, no name, no begin, no end. So if you attach to something small, computer. Ego is small. No end, no beginning, time. This is a space. What is a small thing? What is the biggest, biggest, big thing? Small thing is bigger. Bigger is small. So, small and big, from where you are thinking? The next, quiet, very quiet. There is moment, uh, moment to moment of quietness. So, movement, is a movement, everything is a movement. It's a from where? Quiet. Quiet is movement, how different? Quiet and movement. Movement is quiet, quiet is movement. So, Darwin said, if you're too quiet, if you're too quiet, in too quiet, get too quiet, that's not quiet. In movement, get quiet, that's too quiet. So movement is quiet. So that is, everything is from infinity to infinity. From infinity to infinity. So that is an infinity, okay? From infinity to infinity. What is from infinity to infinity? Infinity from infinity. Infinity to infinity. <laughs> <laughs> if you understand that, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so what is that? What is that? That is one light without name and form. So next line already. So what is name and without name and form? Next line, explain it. Two horns appear from a rabbit's head. One horn pierces the sun, the other pierces the moon. The wooden chicken flies through the sky, takes a coat of space and necklace of time. Star soup made by a stone monkey. That's a without name and the form. We say two seventy kinds. Why do you say the rabbit appear to form? That is a somebody's age. The age uh, this age begins a rabbit age. Rabbit. We are two and twelve animals. This a rat, cow, this a uh, 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 how or the next is the tiger and rabbit and a snake or the dragon in 12 years. So somebody is a beginning this a rabbit age. So rabbit age appear. Rabbit appear. The next somebody. <laughs> <laughs> next is a wooden chicken. What wooden chicken appear? The wooden chicken appear. Uh, you take this space coat, necklace, time necklace. So this wooden chicken is a freedom, space and freedom, okay? Freedom from space and time. There, that is a, this age, this age, this chicken age. Chicken age. So this age, chicken, freedom age. 
freedom is king. Okay? <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next, uh, star spool made by a stone monkey. That means this monkey all takes star, then makes soup for all beings. That means the stone. Why stone monkey? This month is stone month. Month. And I say stone month. So month, month also twelve months. Okay. January is this uh, uh, January is tiger. January tiger. Then this month is a stone month. So stone. Oh, mon monkey, not month. Monkey, monkey month. Okay. Next. Is this world against me? Am I against this world? I don't care. I lie down on the rocky mountain pillow. I cover with a blanket of blue sky and white clouds. I get a nothingness spring dream on the earth bed. What, what, what does this man, this man, okay? This man is a human being body, it's human being body, but this a attached to human being body then Many have problem thinking about this world against me. Well, I, uh, am I against this world? Yeah, thinking, thinking. I like that. I don't like. It. I don't like society. I don't like this world. I don't like somebody. Many, many, many thinking up here. But in the dream, they fighting and fighting. I sometimes become king. Oh, wonderful! I sometimes, you know. Uh, then and I do one kid, then this food is not, not moving, not, but not moving, but it's bad, then bring in this nile, soon kill me, you know, many, many suffering in the dream, okay. So, this, this is a good dream. It's like, well, I don't care everything, I don't care everything. Only lie down, use a lucky mountain pillow, okay, very big pillow. <laughs> And this uh, blanket is the sky and the white cloud is all in the blanket. And the God dream, nothingness, spring dream. What is nothingness, spring dream? If you, nothingness means everything is just like truth. <coughs> nothingness. Nothingness means the next one. Everything is complete. If you have the nothingness, everything complete. But spring dream under this earth bed, this earth bed, so big man, number one big man. So everybody finds this big man. Everybody has. Not only somebody, everybody has big man inside, okay? <laughs> okay, the next. Vroom, 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 honk, honk, honk. La la la, gong gong gong, ha ha ha, ay ay ay. How old are you, robot? Beep beep beep. S times S plus J equals LG. It's <laughs> <laughs> now they are just like this, just like this. This is society, many, 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 many styles, okay? Broom, 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 hong, hong, hong. Very noisy. Somebody, ay ay, somebody, ha ha ha. That's just like this. <laughs> somebody control this robot, okay? You see this Star Wars, Star Wars. Somebody control this, this way, this way, this way. Then this head, then all answer, okay? 